Hello there scientific brilliant people. How are you today? So today basically I am going to discuss about the safety devices for our electrical in instruments, uh, home appliances and those two safety devices are fuse and MCBs. So if I want to define fuse, so basically in this session I am not going to discuss much about MCB but uh, there will be a lot of discussion about fuse and its connection types, melting points, characteristics which type of fuse should be used where fuse rating all those things will be discussed over here so basically fuse is a safety device which is always connected to live wire Correct? And it prevents our appliances from overloading of current or from excess flow of current. Right? Now, fuse materials, so what type of fuse uh, materials do we use in the construction of fuse? So generally we use copper, then we use zinc, correct? And for our home appliances, the fuses are generally made up of alloy and alloy of tin and lead. Generally the percentages may vary a little bit this is 63% sorry and 37% of the lead so combination of both so this alloy if you construct this alloy then the melting point will be will be decreased actually these two are metals and the melt, melting points of the metals are comparatively high but when you construct the fuse from these two the melting point decreases significantly and the fuse melting point turns out to be about 240 to 250 degree celsius so it melts at that temperature right now let's see the types of fuses so one is cartridge fuse that we mostly use it in uh, the automobiles it is just behind the headlights of the automobiles and that is shown over here in the picture And this is the another type of fuse that is porcelain fuse and you can see that it is made up of hard porcelain material and this porcelain is basically an insulator and we use it at our homes. So this fuse is used at our homes whereas the cartridge fuse is used in mostly automobiles. So if I open it up you see that this slot I am supposed to connect this uh, wire the this alloy wire whose melting point is less I am supposed to pass it over like this then this and this then with the help of screw I am going to tighten it so the wire is not going to move and this is again going to be connected back inside like this now this fuse is connected to live wire so live wire comes like this so from here the live wire the current comes in passes through the fuse wire and again from this part the live wire goes out so again live wire current enters enters through the fuse again passes through the live wire and goes so if the current is too high then the fuse wire inside is going to melt thereby disconnecting the circuit and then the current will not be able to go ahead and that's why our appliances will be more safer so this is basically a porcelain fuse correct okay now what are the characteristics of the good fuse let's look at them one by one so the first characteristic the most important characteristic is the low melting point its melting point should be low it should immediately melt as soon as uh, the current uh, you know a little bit of higher current flows through it second characteristic is the high resistance this I will discuss shortly third characteristic is high conductivity it should be basically a good conductor see because if the if the fuse wire itself is a bad conductor it won't allow the live wire to pass the current in the forward direction so the 
purpose of the fuse will not be served over there right so it should be able to pass the current and excessive current should melt the fuse wire and the fourth one is low oxidation power that means it should not combine with the oxygen so you can see that there are gaps inside so the air and moisture is available inside though in less quantity so what will happen is if the fuse wire oxidizes if it reacts with the oxygen and the moisture it may be possible that the salt deposition may take place it oxide may be formed and thereby it may disturb the melting point right so it should be having low oxidation capacity it should not react with the air or the surrounding gases around it so now these are the four important characteristic now let's see the symbol of the fuse so the symbol for the fuse is like this this is our live wire again this is the live wire and it is usually written like this so this is the fuse correct now why does this fuse should have high resistance let's see so here you are given a, a television say this is a television and this is live wire so from the live wire the current enters in this is our fuse and it passes through the television and from the neutral wire the current again leaves back now we know that this fuse wire since it is made up of an alloy that alloy will have some amount of resistance so let's draw that fuse again over here like this this is our live wire so instead of this fuse I am just choosing to draw a resistor and the resistance is say R and what is this resistance R? It is the resistance of the fuse wire. Now suppose if I current flows through it for T amount of time then the heat generated is equal to H is equal to I square into R times T. If the heat produced is less then the fuse is not going to melt very easily. So what what we want to do is we want our fuse wire to melt as soon as the current increases by some or exceeds the limit for that I need to keep the R very high so if the R is comparatively very large then our fuse will be sensitive if you pass even a small amount of current the high heat generated due to the large value of R will be able to melt the fuse immediately. So fuses are actually our safety devices. So if they don't melt, they are going to damage the appliances. So the resistance should be comparatively higher. Now next part is the fuse rating and that is very important to understand for us. Suppose I have a heater in the bathroom. Suppose this is a bathroom and these are the three connections that is the earth then this is live and this is neutral and now I am connecting a heater to it. So this is a water heater that is connected like this one and now what happens is there is power consumption written on the heater. This heater I am going to connect it to my home. So in India we have 240 volts AC supply. This is the input voltage now the power consumption is 1000 watt so if you know these two values you will be able to know the fuse ratings over here so if I power is equal to voltage into current so if I substitute the values over here 1000 watt that is equal to 240 volts into I so if I divide I am getting the value as approximately 4.2 amperes that means this heater can maximum work at 4.2 amperes but even though if some amount of current is exceeded not at all an issue but if say 6 amperes current flows then there is a problem so we should use a fuse of approximately 5 ampere connected to live wire over here since this is the live wire this is our thing this is live wire so I want to I will be connecting a fuse over here whose rating is 5 ampere so rating means maximum amount of current that the device can handle without getting damaged so if i attach a 5 ampere fuse over here then if due to some voltage fluctuations more than 5 ampere current comes then this fuse wire is going to melt immediately circuit breaks and our heater is going to be safe from the damage correct okay so here say for example the same situation 
say for example that the television has got some uh, power consumption in wattage and suppose this is 240 volts and if you divide if you do the same calculation suppose you are getting maximum 3 amperes so i may use the fuse whose rating is 3 ampere so that means if the current more than 3 ampere comes due to some kind of fluctuations outside then this fuse wire is going to melt and due to the melting of the fuse wire the excess current will not be able to go inside the television and the television will be safe now by chance if you connect the fuse to the live sorry neutral wire like this instead of if you remove it from here and by mistake you put it over here then the high current due to some fluctuation may come in it may damage the television and then after it may pass through the fuse so that is of no use so fuse wires are always you now connected with the live wires now here is a pole again and from the pole from the live wire the current enters in it goes inside the electric meter then again the fuse is connected over here the main fuse and then these are the two electrical appliances in parallel now somebody might be having a question that how many fuses should i connect in my house fuse is a safety device you may connect as many number of fuses as you want so we know that in our homes we have parallel connection this is appliance number 1 this is appliance number 2 based on their power ratings i would be connecting the fuse in series with this and in series with this this is again a live wire so the current will be you know coming in coming in if this current is exceeding then this fuse will melt and our, our appliances will be saved so you may connect many number of fuses with each appliances so each appliance is if it is connected with one fuse then it is more better right now let's discuss a very important um, thing related to the fuses suppose this is a bedroom area and this is a washing area where we usually keep the washing machines and uh, say you may also consider this as a bathroom now where we use water heaters right so if you look carefully then the three pin over here is written 5a and here in the washing area this three pin where we connect our appliances is written 15a now this means in bedroom we require those appliances whose current absorption or which draws very little bit amount of current and washing machine and heavy appliances like air conditions um then we have water heaters they draw too much amount of current so what is basically the difference between these two plugs the wires the wires which are over here which carry current are thicker and the wires over here which carry current are thinner so the builders who make your home they are well aware about this fact and they use thin wiring in the bedroom whereas very thick wiring in the washing areas and in the bathroom where you are using the water heaters so again the same thing it is going to pass through the live wire this is red color wire so it is live wire this is neutral wire now suppose this is a washing machine and washing machine uh, draws 15 ampere current because uh, they also have the you know the the dryers which require a lot of electrical energy in order to dry the clothes so over here what happens is they draw larger amount of current so thicker wires are needed and if you use thinner wires then large amount of current flows through thinner wire thereby heating the wires so this fuse wire is going to melt if the current exceeds 15 ampere so the fuse rating for the washing machines air conditions are comparatively higher and their wirings are also comparatively thicker right and over here in the bedrooms we use say small bulbs we use mobile charging um, we we charge our mobile phones all they require very small amount of current so that's why thinner wiring and very small rating fuses are um, kept over there right so this is the basic difference between the both the bedroom section and the washing area as well as the bathrooms now in heavy appliances if you look carefully what i have done is this is again earthing pin neutral pin and live pin and if you see this is our say a uh, connection part three pin and this is our heavy appliances as you can see that there is a small fuse which is already connected inside 
this plug with live wire. So what happens is the moment you connect this pin over here, so the current flows in. If this current is more than the required amount, then this fuse is going to blow up and the extra current may not damage your appliance. If everything is normal, then again the current will flow back like this and your device is going to work very smoothly. So there are sometimes fuses inside the three pin plug itself. As you can see, the earthing pin is longer in order to protect us from the body current or shocks. Now the problem people is, should we use fuse or not? I should recommend that uh, these kind of fuses must not be used if you are living in some industrial area. Because if you are living in an industrial area, there are continuous fluctuations of the voltage and the high current may you know, blow up the fuse. Again, you need to open up this fuse, you need to change the wire and again put it back and the things will be back again normal. So if the electricity at your home goes off, then first of all you check the fuse and you may you know, call some electrician because you may not be knowing which kind of wires they exactly fit in over here. So if you are living in an industrial area, what happens is continuously you will keep on changing the fuse. So it is very difficult, you know, it is very hectic to again pull out the fuses, put on new wires and again put it back. Till then you will have to stay without the electricity. So we have a very good option for that. And that is an MCB people. So here we have an MCB switch which trips off by itself. So as you can see over here, this MCB itself has got tripping mechanism and this automatically trips down if there is too much of current flowing through it. So you just have to go outside the house where there is there is our MCB and just trip it on like this again and if the current is still very high it will again trip back. So you have to wait for some time till the current comes back to normal and then you can trip it up again and everything will be fine. Now I would like to you know show you the opened MCB over here. So this MCB is open and as you can see there is a coil inside like this. Now what happens is if you pass the current through this coil then the coil becomes a magnet and due to magnetic field generated the tripping mechanism happens. So this works on the magnetic effects of current whereas the fuse works on the heating effect of current. That is the most important thing. So hopefully five uh, people you have uh, understood the concept of fuse as well as the MCB. If you have any doubts, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video. Yes, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do that. Thank you for watching the video.